One of the more sensational developments in the Gilgo Beach investigation happened when James Burke, the former Suffolk County Chief of Department, was arrested for beating a drug-addicted burglary suspect who had stolen a bag from Burke's police vehicle. Embarrassing sex toys were found in the bag, and it emerged that Burke had been investigated for doing drugs with a sex worker in the 1990s, not securing his gun in the process. But the original chief of detectives in the Gilgo case, Dominic Ferrone, did not believe Burke was involved in the serial killings. You don't believe so? I don't believe so. Sherman is a demon that walks among us, a predator that ruined families. It took nearly 13 years Rex, did you do it? to track down the accused Gilgo Beach serial killer. We executed over 300 subpoenas, search warrants. The amount of evidence that we're getting is massive. A married father of two, living in the house he grew up in. You never know who's living on your block. Now he's tied to multiple murders. They're human beings. And I know Amber was so much more, and I miss her terribly. This is a PIX11 News Special. Hunt, the Gilgo Beach serial killer. I'm Mary Murphy on Gilgo Beach, where a serial killer investigation was launched more than a dozen years ago. Four dead women who came to be known as the Gilgo Four were discovered here in the brush off Ocean Parkway in December 2010. Now police say they finally found the murderer. He was living a double life. He had a wife, he had two kids, nice uh, job as, a, as an architect. And Rex Heuerman, 59, probably never expected to be surrounded by cops in Midtown as he left work on a Thursday evening. Rex, did you do it? Still wearing the same khakis, the towering suspect was accused of being the Gilgo Beach, Long Island serial killer known as Lisk, who eluded law enforcement for more than a dozen years. But you were aware that he was patronizing other sex it, workers? It certainly appeared as though he was, yes. While investigators in white Tyvek suits immediately descended on Hewerman's lifelong home in Massapequa Park, armed with search warrants, the suspect was initially charged with murdering three of the Gilgo Four, Megan Waterman, Melissa Bartholomew, and Amber Costello, all petite online escorts who were discovered dead in 2010 with another escort, Maureen Brainerd Barnes, in the brush off Ocean Parkway. The only thing I can tell you that he did say uh, as he was in tears was, I didn't do this. Three of the sex workers were bound in burlap, and Hewerman was named the prime suspect in the murder of the fourth, Brainerd Barnes. Forensic psychiatrist Dr. Park Dees consulted on the case of serial killer Joel Rifkin, another Long Island resident, and spoke to us about Hewerman's arrest. The most common sexual motive for serial killings is sexual sadism. Becoming the god to that victim is the offender's uh, primal goal. The architect's neighbors on First Avenue in Massapequa Park were stunned that the hulking Hewerman hid the alleged crimes for so long. A map showing Wantaw Parkway near his home reveals how easily he could have driven to Ocean Parkway, close to the Jones Beach Exchange. He grew up there as, from, uh, as a kid with his parents. Many thought that Hewerman's house was an eyesore. Detectives said they found hundreds of guns locked in a vault in the house, and fairly soon they were searching storage facilities nearby. Are there body parts or things that we need to take a look at? Are there trophies of some of the victims that, uh, unfortunately, that he stored in that location? The crucial break in the case had come last year from a new interview with Amber Costello's roommate and pimp, who said a John had come to their house in Babylon on September 1st, 2010, the day before she vanished, and the client, described as ogre-like, was driving a green Chevy Avalanche. Six weeks later, on March 14th, 2022, the name Rex Hurman was first mentioned as a suspect in the Gilgo case. Not only did he own the Chevy Am Avalanche, but he, he matched the physical description. During a Google search of old maps, investigators discovered a green Chevy Avalanche parked outside Ewerman's house in plain sight. And now, a former escort is coming forward to say she talked about true crime investigations with Rex Ewerman during a date. 
Long Island stylist Nicole Brass appeared on Cuomo. And I said, well, have you heard of the Gilgo Beach murders? Like his body language kind of changed and like his eyes were like as if he was in a different place, like he was picturing it all over again. It was weird. He almost kind of made the victims like seem like people who didn't matter. Huerman's wife has now filed divorce papers, which were not contested. The wife's sister, Johanna, spoke briefly to PIX11 News from her Long Island home. We don't know anything. We're hearing about most of it on the news ourselves. So we, we're just going to refrain from saying anything. And there are more revelations about the people Rex Huerman did work for. Aside from contracts with New York City and Target, documents reveal he received $200,000 from former President Donald Trump's company to renovate office space at a downtown building. The revelations just reinforce investigators' beliefs that the serial killer suspect lived two lives. Dr. Dietz said he would like to know if the burly Hewerman was bullied in his childhood. Law enforcement wants to know if the suspect is connected to six other Ocean Parkway victims, some of them dismembered. It could be that they are all linked or that some are linked. It would be quite a coincidence to have another serial killer working in the same area at the same time, but it's happened before. Families of the victims who lived in upstate cities or out of state had to fight to get the attention of law enforcement because the women were categorized as sex workers. Relatives of the victims often held vigils here and demanded they get treated with dignity. Now they've seen the face of the accused killer. He just looks like a cold monster. And in, in his eyes, I mean, you can just see that it's like a sociopath. Victim Amber Costello's aunt watched the serial killer case unfold from her home in North Carolina. Other families somberly followed District Attorney Ray Tierney into court when the gruesome indictment was unsealed. One of them was the younger sister of victim Alyssa Barthelemy. The sister was just 15, according to family, when the accused killer made taunting phone calls in 2009 using Bartholomew's cell phone. Is this Melissa's little sister? That's how he started out the conversation. Is this Melissa's little sister? And she answered yes. Megan Waterman's daughter was just three when her mother disappeared. God bless. This surveillance shows Megan Waterman, just 22, in the early hours of June 6, 2010, shortly before she left the Holiday Inn Express in Hop Hog, Long Island, to meet a client. Prosecutors say that John was architect Rex Hewerman, based on calls from a burner phone he allegedly bought the day before Waterman met her demise. And for each of the murders, he got an individual burner phone, and he used that to communicate with the victims. Amber Costello, 27, was the last of the Gilgo Four to disappear. Court papers indicate her roommate and pimp tried to act like an outraged boyfriend when the suspect allegedly showed up at their Babylon rental on September 1st, 2010, looking for sexual services. They wanted to rip him off. Hewerman allegedly texted Amber Costello saying, that was not so nice. Do I get credit for next time? Her roommate watched her leaving the house the next day, taking nothing with her. He was really worried because when she went out the door, she didn't take her purse or her cell phone. He was like, you're forgetting them. And she said, I'm not gonna need them. Amber Costello's body was discovered three months later with the Gilgo Four on Ocean Parkway. He's huge. These, none of these girls stood a chance against him. The Long Island serial killer investigation involved painstaking phone analysis, the search for better DNA technology, and the hope that a tip would come in that would change everything. The Gilgo Beach Task Force tracked Rex Hewerman for more than a year with physical and digital surveillance. A 32-page court affidavit claimed prosecutors had images of Hewerman buying extra minutes on his burner phones, hoping they weren't traceable. But experts did eventually trace his burners, they say, and some victims' phones to cell sites near Hewerman's place of work in Midtown Manhattan and four cell towers in Massapequa Park that were close to his home. And that was mapped out, that was called the box. It wasn't easy, Mary. 
Very, very difficult work. Once Hewerman was identified as the person of interest. We executed over 300 subpoenas, search warrants pertaining to this individual. That allowed the task force to check Hewerman's phone records and his online activity. In a 14 month period, he had over 200 searches pertaining to uh, the Gilgo investigation. And by using fake online profiles, Hewerman also allegedly searched for six subjects like torture porn and child porn. He's a demon, he's, a, he's an animal, he's just somebody that uh, should not be around other human beings. The affidavit revealed Hewerman was nailed with his own DNA and that of his wife. After collecting 11 bottles from the family trash in 2022, investigators swabbed them for genetic material. Lab results this year indicated female hairs found on three victims' bodies likely came from female DNA in the Hewerman household or car. The linchpin that sealed up the case happened when cops snatched a pizza box that Rex Hewerman allegedly tossed in a trash can near his Midtown office. When scientists tested the DNA recovered from the uneaten pizza crust, they say it matched DNA from the burlap used to wrap victim Megan Waterman. When we come back, an in-depth look at the decade-long search for the Long Island serial killer and how the disappearance of a young sex worker exposed the crime. What happened? These people are plotting to kill me. You're watching a PIX11 News special, Hunt, the Gilgo Beach Serial Killer. We are joining you again from Gilgo Beach, where the Long Island serial killer investigation was born in December 2010. We have followed the case every step of the way as professional and amateur detectives try to solve it. The bodies of four young women, all seriously decomposed, in fact skeletal, were discovered over three days. Reporter Mike Sheehan told us about the discovery of the Gilgo Four in December 2010. A police canine finding the first victim, Melissa Bartholomew, in the brush off Ocean Parkway, and the others were close by. Right now we're forensically uh, working with the bones and the bodies. Investigators initially believed the crime scene could be connected to another mystery. Detectives are now comparing these murders to the grisly discovery of four young women found in Atlantic City several years ago. Cops in Gilgo were looking for a missing sex worker from Jersey City, Shannon Gilbert, when they came upon the remains of Maureen Brainerd Barnes, Megan Waterman, Melissa Bartholomew, and Amber Costello, women who had also advertised escort services online. It's sad, and I just wanted to get a chance to see where my sister was. Amber Costello's sister got emotional on Ocean Parkway four months later. When police announced they'd found more remains. In the area between Oak Beach and Gilgo Beach. People are scared. Investigators ultimately found 10 sets of remains. One victim was a toddler, and her mother was found in another section of Ocean Parkway. And there were body parts tied to female torsos that had turned up 40 miles to the east in Manorville. Shannon Gilbert's remains were found a year after the Gilgo Four were discovered in Thick Marsh in Oak Beach. It's bogs, and you step and you can sink, sink way down. If it wasn't for Shannon Gilbert's disappearance, we may never have found the remains of the, uh, the other victims. John, did you kill those two women? Nearly three years later, a father of two from Manorville was arrested for the cold case murders of two other sex workers in the early 90s, not far from his home. It was natural to question if Carpenter John Bitroff could be Lisk, the Long Island serial killer. Former District Attorney Tom Spoda insisted there was no investigative link. So I did all that up, you know. This is when PIX11 News kickstarted its coverage of Gilgo, looking at the first known case of body parts connected to the elusive serial killer. Taking a boat to the eastern end of Fire Island, Davis Park. In 1996, two female legs were found here wrapped in plastic. Years later, during the serial killer investigation, a skull that was found in Tobe Beach was tested for DNA, and that DNA was matched later to the legs here in Davis Park. We still had nagging questions about the four women killed in New Jersey. After learning one victim, Kim Raffo, had spent time at a Long Island hotel before her death. 
On November 20th, 2006, two women came upon the body of 35-year-old Kim Raffo face down in a muddy ditch here in West Atlantic City, about 50 yards away from the Golden Key Motel. Police who arrived on the scene made more grisly discoveries. Three other dead women, all of them like Raffo, barefoot but fully clothed, and all of their heads facing east toward the casinos of Atlantic City. Any reason to think there might be a connection between the Gilgo Beach, Long Island killer and what happened in Atlantic City? I'm not prepared to discuss that. There, there have been instances over the years where we have reached out to law enforcement authorities in the Midwest. In 2020, during the pandemic, then Suffolk County Police Commissioner Geraldine Hart announced in a phone call that police had finally identified a Jane Doe in the Gilgo case. Today, we are announcing that Jane Doe number six has been positively identified as Valerie Mack. Mack, a young mom, was last seen 17 miles from Atlantic City. Her torso was found in Matterville in 2000, and it took genetic genealogy to identify her 20 years later. We once again asked authorities about a potential Atlantic City connection. We've been in touch with the Atlantic City PD uh, throughout uh, 2020, but at this time there is no link uh, between this case and the uh, Atlantic City case. Greg, did you do it? And now we finally have a Gilgo Beach suspect who allegedly killed when his wife was out of town. It remains to be seen whether Rex Hewerman took his own out of town trips. Shannon Gilbert, a missing sex worker from Jersey City, shed the light on the existence of a serial killer. Her family believed she was murdered while trying to escape a dangerous situation. But Suffolk County detectives don't agree. What happened? These people are flying to kill me. Police waited a dozen years before they released Shannon Gilbert's frantic 911 call from a John's house on the fairway in Oak Beach. State police? Yeah, there's somebody after me. Cops have long believed she was having a mental health episode when she started banging on doors before running into a dark marsh. It almost looked like initially she died just in the brush and she succumbed, I think, to the elements. Gilbert's body wasn't discovered until a year later. But the Gilbert family attorney said an independent autopsy report showed the dead escort had a crushed hyoid bone. The question becomes, is there a killer or killers? The search for evidence connected to the suspected Gilgo Beach serial killer is quickly expanding beyond Long Island. With the arrest of the suspected Gilgo Beach serial killer, more evidence came to light, taking law enforcement across state lines. Now the investigation is national in scope with police paying close attention to properties in South Carolina and Nevada. New York State Police traveled across state lines to haul away this vehicle that's been tied to accused serial killer Rex Hewerman. The car impounded by the sheriff in Chester County, South Carolina. The Chester County Sheriff's Office was requested by the Gilgo Beach Task Force to assist in gathering evidence. The Chester County Sheriff's Office assisted the Gilgo Beach Task Force in obtaining a court order to seize a vehicle in South Carolina. It's now part of the ongoing investigation into the Long Island murders. Neighbors say the SUV is a green Chevy Avalanche. A witness description of this kind of vehicle, possibly the same one, was the crucial tip that led to Hewerman being identified as a suspect. Meantime, police may also be looking into this home in South Carolina. Ewerman reportedly bought it in 2022 with the goal of retiring there near his brother. One neighbor said he had a strange encounter with the accused murderer. Walking down the street, he told me I wasn't allowed to walk down the street. And Nevada records show Ewerman also owns a timeshare in Las Vegas. Police there say they are reviewing unsolved cases for any possible connection to him. The Gilgo Beach Task Force is also meticulously combing through two storage units in Amityville, Long Island. And as the investigation continues in multiple states, Ewerman is due back in Suffolk County Court in August. Coming up, the mystery remains. Who killed the six other victims found around Gilgo Beach?
what investigators are saying about these unsolved murders. We'll be right back. Investigators scoured Ocean Parkway after the Gilgo Four were discovered in December 2010, eventually finding a total of 10 sets of remains, including a toddler. Police are now focused on six cases that remain unsolved along this stretch of roadway. One of the enduring mysteries in the Gilgo Beach serial killer investigation is the identity of Peaches. The woman's torso was discovered in a green Rubbermaid cooler in Hempstead Lake State Park in 1997. She had a Peaches tattoo above her left breast. 14 years later, when investigators were searching for additional victims of the Gilgo Beach killer, they discovered extremities tied to Peaches in the Nassau County section of Ocean Parkway. It turned out her gold jewelry matched jewelry on a female toddler who was discovered 10 miles to the east on Ocean Parkway in Oak Beach. DNA confirmed this victim was the daughter of Peaches, and police are still seeking to identify the only man who was discovered during their search, a victim who was dressed in women's clothing. Suffolk County established a Gilgo News website several years ago, which is still seeking tips about the six victims who were found after the Gilgo Four. The mystery surrounding the Gilgo Beach serial killer persists because police are still seeking justice for the additional victims who were found here on Ocean Parkway. In this day and age, qualified immunity remains one of the deadliest threats to U.S. citizens. There is no doubt, and as witnessed daily, that as long as police officers in our uncivilized nation are encouraged to murder without consequences, we can expect no improvements to our life expectancy. According to the United States National Academy of Sciences, and I quote, police in the United States kill far more people than do police in other advanced industrial democracies. To date, Colorado, New Mexico, and New York have repealed qualified immunity, and we remain hopeful that in the near future, serial killers with badges will be held accountable for the unreasonable execution of citizens. Furthermore, the Academy of Sciences additionally says, journalists have stepped into this void and initiated a series of systematic efforts to track police-involved killings. And I bid to you, my fellow citizens, that this rampage of certified murders must be stopped for the safety of our children, handicapped, and veterans. Please support the new Institute for Justice and their Americans Against Qualified Immunity campaign. Check them out at www.aaqi.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and Twitter. That's Americans Against Qualified Immunity. That's all for now, my brothers and sisters. Stay safe and always film the police.